So thanks for uh, sitting down for the uh, interview. Um, first question, uh, what's your name and what do you currently work on? So my name is Sebastian Markpage. I uh, work on uh, the React core. So I'm basically maintaining and trying to accept pull requests and do code reviews and also re-architect uh, the core of React um, and prepare it for the future of the changes we want to make. Uh, how long have you been uh, working with React? Um, I think it's it's more than two years now. I was uh, one of the earlier adopters at, at Facebook, and um, one of the first projects I made was um, this insights tool. So I started making contributions to React through the uh, uh, by extending it and implementing React Art, which is a canvas drawing library uh, for React, um, and that's how I got started. And then I jumped on the React core team. So. Um, I was also one of the earlier uh, contributors before we open sourced. So you're talking later today. What's your uh, talk going to be on? Uh, my talk is going to be on uh, if React uh, is really coupled to the DOM and that programming model, or if we can go deeper below the DOM and have React talk to uh, the box tree or even WebGL or the GPU directly. Um, to see if the DOM is the ideal abstraction for React to target, or if there's other alternatives that we could target. So uh, React's like it really uh, opens a lot of people's eyes to different ways of, of programming the web. And working with React for the last two years, uh, is there any sort of thing that you've learned or insight that you've had that's uh, really profoundly affected how you look at software? Yeah, I think that uh, the functional paradigm in general is what. Uh, really react is open up to a wider audience I think that functional programming has has really been an, uh, an open field for academics for a long time but it doesn't have doesn't haven't reached this mainstream audience and coding in react where we're approaching that with a very pragmatic mindset we're not enforcing certain strict functional paradigms we we gradually introduce them to people so we, we take a, a more of a pragmatic view of, of functional programming and that for me uh, coming from a background where i didn't necessarily use strictly functional programming that has really been eye-opening for me to see how much um, i grow as a developer uh, by embracing these core concepts of functional programming so uh, one of the things that uh, ES6 or, or JavaScript 2015 introduces is classes. Um, now that you've embraced sort of functional programming, what do you think of classes in ES6? So uh, classes is is the number one feature that people are really requesting for ES6. It's it's the people really want the idea of uh, of classes in, in a nicer, concise, and standardized way of expressing classes. And I think that's really important because there's still a lot of people embracing that uh, capability and there's uh, is a lot of value in the notion of of instances. But personally, I, I find myself gravitating towards um, a more uh, functional style or even just a, a, a structural C style programming paradigm um, where I don't uh, encourage the objective program, uh, object-oriented programming model, but more of a functional pattern matching uh, programming model. Um, but I think there's 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 still a lot of space for both worlds. Um, we, we see ourselves moving more towards less side effects and more more declarative in the future of React. And when we do that, some uh, concepts of classes doesn't make sense. So it might need me mean that in the future when you try to um, introduce new features we need to start thinking about what goes beyond classes how else can we express these components in a w without using classes um, but that's probably going to be an optional extra for certain features do you see ES6 classes um, making its their way into React in the future, or will React stay more purely functional in its uh, structure? So we already have ES6 class support in React, and we, we, we also have the React create class paradigm. And we're not really opinionated about how you create your classes, how you define your components. There's 
there's multiple different ways we can do that. Um, we're trying to introduce a new style that uses uh, pure function. It's a single function instead of uh, uh, multiple functions to just concisely express a very simple component that's just one render method. Um, so I, I think there's, there's uh, room for both worlds. Thanks. Um, what do you see as the, uh, the future of JavaScript and React in the next couple of years? Well, I think for JavaScript in general, uh, it's, it's opened up an interesting uh, venue because JavaScript is not just one thing an anymore. It, it used to be the language JavaScript that you write in your source code, and what is executed in the browser is also called JavaScript. But now there's two JavaScripts. There's JavaScript that you write, which is essentially is a Babel script at this point because we're all transpiling our, our code. And then there's JavaScript that runs in the browser, which doesn't look the same as the, the code you write because of compatibility, polyfills, and all this stuff, right? But then we have a new technology like WebAssembly, which is a, a lower level um, assembly-like language bytecode for web browsers. So maybe the future of JavaScript the language is that we compile to WebAssembly or something like it. Or maybe we compile to uh, a middle ground, half WebAssembly, half JavaScript. Maybe we do put more work into our compilers to optimize our code, to use type systems, to do optimizations ahead of time that you currently can't do um, in VMs because they're, they're too expensive to do on the fly. Um, so I think we will see that JavaScript evolves from being two separate things, the source language JavaScript and the target language JavaScript. But the source language JavaScript will probably also fork in multiple ways. Like we already have this with Flow, we have this with TypeScript. Uh, maybe there's even more rooms for things like CoffeeScript or ClojureScript and, and other languages to evolve. And what the, that, um, that concerns React because React is a, is a tool, is a library, but it's also an ecosystem. And we want all of these libraries and all these languages to work well together. So we have to think about that when we design React and how we think about JavaScript as well. All right, thank you. That was great.